do they just seem to come out really early and take a swing at you? Did you think your guys met that energy? Were you disappointed in your energy at the beginning? I just think they uh, physically uh, took it to us tonight. You know, the offensive rebounds early in the game set a tone. Um, you know, they got, got into us and didn't let us get into our offense. Um, you know, we hung in there. We had a good uh, good second quarter to keep the, the game close. And we liked, um, you know, the, the start of the, of the third, you know, getting Steph some space. And... Um, we just couldn't stay with them. They, they dominated us physically. Um, th th I think they had about 18 more field goal attempts than us between the turnovers and the, uh, and the offensive board. So they just, it was total domination. They, they, uh, they deserved it. They, were, they had a great game tonight. Um, Mike and his staff did a great job. And um, give them the credit they deserve. How do you kind of, I guess, step back, view the the future of this team? You know, especially getting eliminated this early. Yeah, it's it's too early for me to even think about that. You know, um, you invest so much in in the season, and and um, there's so much that goes on. Um, it, it's so emotional. It's um, you know, the the highs and lows of this business are incredible. That's why. We're all kind of addicted to it. Uh, you can't find this um, anywhere else in, in life. I know I can't. Um, and you have to absorb the, the lows. Um, we've been really blessed here with amazing players and you know multiple championships and finals appearances and um, the highest of highs. And um, this is the flip side. This is life. This is how it works. You don't you know you don't get to stay on top forever. So um, what happens this summer and going into next year, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Um, right now, I'm just thinking about uh, our guys and um, how uh, committed they were this year, the connection they had, uh, the effort they put in uh, to put us in a position to at least have a chance. And um, we clearly weren't, weren't good enough, but not for a lack of effort or uh, commitment from our guys. They were great all year. Um, it's um, incredible when I think about, um, you know, I just you think about how difficult and physical this game was. And um, these guys have had, you know, our core group, six finals runs where, you know, you have 24 of these games, you know, in, in one playoff run. And uh, that's what I was thinking about down the, down the stretch of that game as it was clear we were losing, that, um, you know, Sacramento dominated. Um, but our guys have been fighting for so long. They're incredible uh, competitors and warriors, and I couldn't be prouder of them. Um, but, you know, we've got a, an off season where we've got a lot to, lot to think about for sure. Steve, um, two, two questions for you. One, what what do you think kind of kept Clay from really being able to get anything going on offense for him? Yeah, I thought they were really physical early uh, in the game. So his first few shots um, weren't great looks. And so I think he fell out of rhythm. Um, it can happen, you know, as a shooter, you you, um, you miss your first few and, and the game isn't um, coming as, as easily. And um, I give them credit for their defense. They were, they were really physical um, all night and um, made it tough on us. And then I guess following up with the physicality of Sacramento, a, a lot of the turnovers, you know, just their ball pressure on you guys. We talked a lot about needing to not turn the ball over heading into this. What, I guess, kind of caused you guys to cough up the ball so much and how did that change the momentum of this game? Yeah, the, fir the first half, I think we had um, 10 turnovers, if I'm not mistaken, and, and um, did a better job in the second half. But, um, you know, some of it was um, just, uh, you know, some careless decisions. Some of it was there. Um, I mean, I, De'Aaron Fox uh, had a couple steals on the ball. Um, so the pressure on the ball uh, bothered us. And, and, um, and then I think, you know, later on in the game, um, you know, Steph was trying desperately to get us back in it and he so he was uh, you know making some um, some plays where he felt like he had to to try to make something happen and you know we got a little bit out of our offense at that point Steve over here on the side to your right um, following up on Kendra's question on clay how difficult was it for you to see him struggle like that given everything he's meant to the organization everything he kind of fought through this season to have a very good second half yeah. to see it end like that 
Yeah. What was that like for you? It was tough. It was tough. I love Clay so much. I mean, what he's meant to me um, in the 10 years we've been together. Um, uh, I've, I've watched him the last couple of years, you know, fighting the, um, the feeling of devastation from the injuries. And I've watched him this year um, really flip his season around with his approach. And I saw him, you know, enjoy the, the second half of the season and play with a little more freedom, a little more joy. And so tonight was tough to, um, you know, to see him struggle. Uh, but as I told the guys in there, that, you know, it's all, it's all part of being an athlete and being an NBA player. I mean, there's, uh, there's incredible highs and, and really tough lows. And this was a, a, a tough one. Uh, for Clay, and just and for the whole team, you know, we just we didn't play very well, and um, and it hurts. So it's all part of it. Uh, Coach, is it inevitable that you mentioned being sentimental? That I don't know how long you've started kind of feeling that way, but like, kind of, what were your thoughts uh, as you went into the locker room, knowing that the locker room may look a lot different? Or perhaps it could look the same. Just... Yeah, I mean, and and it, it it's that way anyway. Even if you're winning um, every year, you lose um, guys and bring new guys in, and you know the relationships that you build in this job are, are really special because you go through um, so many emotional highs and lows together, and you form um, these powerful bonds that last a lifetime. It's what I love about team sports. I mean, you just. You know, my my best friends in life are, you know, my, my former teammates who I played with. And uh, there's something incredibly powerful about, um, you know, the, these relationships. And you you just know that um, every year there's going to be changes. And um, it's, it's part of the business, but doesn't doesn't make it any easier. Steve, it felt like this game was much more like early in the season, the hump you got over, where it's like, they're throwing all this at Steph and you need somebody else. You've got a lot of guys who can score, but it feels like you just didn't know who was scoring that night. Just how difficult is that to run an offense when you don't know like which guy is going to be or maybe if two guys are having a bad night? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I've got to do a better job next year of um, – you know, helping us offensively, helping us find a little more rhythm. Um, I think we got a little too dependent on individual play this year. Um, last couple of years, really, we've, um, you know, we haven't had the same uh, rhythm and flow that we've had, um, you know, over the last decade. And uh, I think uh, my staff and I have to really um, look um, at everything we're doing and try to create a, a little more offensive flow to help our uh, our secondary players, um, you know, get get easier shots and and, and better rhythm. Uh, just everything that required the second half of the season, going 27 and 12 to kind of get to this point. Did you sense at all that that kind of took a toll, um, having to win so many games like that just to get here? No, I, I mean, I don't think that was why we lost tonight. I, th I think uh, we found a really good formula and a good groove in the second half. Um, to me, um, what this season is about is how many um, – great teams there are in the West, you know, for us to go, to win 46 games and be the 10th seed. That's uh, you go back in the history of the league, um, 46 you, you, on average probably gets you the fifth seed. Um, we got a bunch of teams going for it. Bunch of teams who have loaded up, uh, really talented, really well coached. Um, so the West is um, just a bear this year. And, um, you know, you got New Orleans and Sacramento. One of them is going to be out of the playoffs on Friday. Both have had uh, great seasons. And, um, but you look at everybody above us, um, you know, Dallas, Denver, Clippers. Um, I know I'm missing several more. Um, you know, the, it's uh, Minnesota and, and OKC as the one seed. I mean, these are all great teams. And uh, I've never seen um, a conference so loaded. And that's why, like, I, I'm, I'm really proud of our guys and, and obviously disappointed in the end result. But I can't sit here and say, you know, man, one, you know, one play here, one play there. Um, this, is a, this was a tough season because everybody's good out there. How do, you, how do you kind of view your, your season coaching Chris and and how do you view his future or non-future yeah. with you guys? Chris has been fantastic, not only on the court, but the leadership. Um, you know, he's 
is a difficult situation for him that he handled beautifully. But, I mean, he's always been the starting point guard for his team. But you look at our team, and we're pretty small, you know, and even though he's one of our best players, if we want to throw our best players out there, and he, you know, he's, he's one of them, you start, you know, adding up, you know, Chris, Steph, Clay, we're, we're you know, we're just, it's not the ideal roster for him. Um, but he was fantastic for us because he became our backup point guard. Um, as I've said many times, our our non-staff minutes were uh, the best they've ever been um, because of Chris's leadership. Um, when anybody um, was injured and he played with Steph, it's fantastic. Um, but it's tough to, to, to survive. You saw it tonight. I mean, I think their size and physicality um, overwhelmed us. And um, so when you look at the... Um, the combinations that we have uh, out there, it usually kind of separates Steph and Chris and and Clay, and so there's not as as many minutes as Chris would like. But the way he handled it this year was incredibly so professional, um, such a great mentor for the younger guys. Um, one of the great pros I've ever been around. Just his approach and his attitude and his sacrifice. Um, uh, I love coaching Chris, and I I really hope we um, bring them back next year and you know like I said there's a long off season we've got to we got to see how it all plays out. Steve in the second quarter looked for a little while that Kaminga, Pajemski and Moody were kind of holding you in this game. Uh, what does it's one game but what does this under this kind of challenge tell you about those guys what does it add to them maybe going into the off season and next season? Yeah, I mean, I think all three had had uh, good seasons. Moses, um, you know, was in and out of the lineup, but but um, every time we called on him, including tonight, um, you know, he really played well. And um, I think both he and Jonathan, in their third years, have um, have really um, gotten better and and um, uh, blossomed. And uh, BP showed. Um, you know that he's he's for real. As a rookie, he was. There's a reason we played him so much. Um, he's a hell of a player. Um, Trace too. Trace had a tough night, but a great experience for him to feel this. And um, so we got a lot of good young players, and and that's uh, very promising. Um, but we'll we'll worry about all that stuff, you know, later on. If uh, if Mike Dunleavy or someone else in the front office asked you, you know. If you believe that Steph, Clay, and Draymond are capable of making another championship run, what would you tell them? I would say I believe they can. I'll, uh, you know, these guys are all still really damn good players. So, um, hopefully, we we uh, can re-sign Clay. Uh, Draymond and Steph are both, um, you know, under contract. So we're gonna we're gonna roll it back next year. Clay is the question mark there, though. You mentioned that. I mean, how imperative do, do you view it? As to keep him around? Uh, we, we need Clay back. I mean, he's, um, you know, his, uh, I know he had a tough night tonight, but what he represents for us, the spacing, um, you know, we're not a deep shooting team. We're a little top heavy. And, um, you know, Clay's presence means so much to the, to the spacing on the floor, to the flow of the offense. And um, he's still got good, good years left. And, um, and I know I speak for everybody in the organization. We want him back. Um, obviously, there's business uh, at hand, and that has to be addressed with Clay's representatives and you know Mike and Joe. And but what Clay has meant to this franchise, as good as he still is, um, we desperately want him back. All right, that's it for Thank you. Great one.